Welcome to Sandra School. And today we are having another interesting topic. Under the big umbrella, who is this Jesus? Remember, the big umbrella is who is this Jesus? And it is very important that we know who this Jesus is in our lives as Christians. But before we go on, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for another day in your presence. As we learn from you, we pray that your word will come mightily into our heart and to transform us, to know you better and to love you more. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So children, welcome to Sunday School. I hope you had a very beautiful night's rest. And today's topic, under the sub-theme, death and resurrection. And that is a sub-theme. And then we want to look at the topic, Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Have you ever seen a donkey? Have you ever seen someone riding on a donkey? Yes, in our modern times, we have people riding on the bicycle. And sometimes, some people give us ride in a car. However, in Jesus' time, what we have as means of transportation are horses, donkeys, and camels. Especially in the region Jesus grew up, I think we have more donkeys. You see the picture of a donkey and Jesus riding on a donkey. Okay, so let's go on, children. Now we want to look at Jesus who came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. What does that mean? It means a lot. And so, come with me. Let us see what these mean as children of God, Jesus riding on a donkey. And so, for us, text today, or for our topic today, we'll be reading from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. For our topic today, the Bible reading is taken from Mark 11, verses 1 to 11. And the memory verse is taken from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah Chapter 9, verse 9. And what is our main thrust? Our main thrust is Jesus, the triumphant King. Jesus, the triumphant King. Now, how do we look at this topic this week? Jesus came into Jerusalem. He has a living In Israel for some time. He has been doing his a pastoral work, going from one place to another, telling people about the kingdom of God. And it is time for him to go back to heaven. And he needed to do something very important. And he needed to get back to Jerusalem, where he will be what? Apprehended and killed for our salvation. So, Jesus decided to send his disciples to go to, be, uh, to go and get him a cot, that is, a baby donkey. We'll be reading much of that in our story, in our Bible passage, Mark, from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. So, what are the lessons for us to learn. 
what are the lessons for us to learn. The very first one is that Jesus is omnipotent. Jesus knows and sees everything and he knows everywhere. So what are we to do? We are to obey him just as his disciples obeyed him. He told them, go to this place and get me, you'll see a cot that no one has rode on and bring it. But you're going to be intercepted and asked, or you're going to be asked, why are you taking this cot? Just let them know that the master is in need of it. And that is what the disciples found out, or that is what happened. He predicted and it was true. So, children, Jesus is omnipotent. He knows and sees everything and is everywhere. So, let us obey him. Another lesson to learn is that Jesus is a humble man. When he was on earth, he humbled himself. His riding on a donkey signifies his humility. And so children, we are called to be humble. We are called to be what? Humble. Do not be arrogant. Do not be too proud of yourself. Always learn to greet, to say nice words, and not to show off. Don't blow your own trumpets. These are ways to show humility. Say nice words to your friends. When you are doing better, don't think you are, you are you, you don't think too big of yourself. Always learn to understand all this. And at this time, we need kind words to say to our friends. So children, like I said before, let us be humble. Another thing we should learn is that God is in need of us. God wants to use you. God wants to use me. In that you lead to Connor, God wants you to help mommy out. God wants you to help daddy out. God wants you to Go on errands for daddy and mommy and uncles and aunts. So, and most especially, God wants you to preach his word, to tell people that he loves them. And so, be ready for the master's use, just like the donkey, just like the cot was ready for the master's use. Be ready for the master's use and you can do that by helping at home by helping your friend to understand that mathematics by helping your friend to pick up one or two things off the floor where you know that is not where it should be these are ways to help out and so let us realize that these little little things goes a long way to show that we are ready for the master's use. And one another another thing is that God deserves true worship. Anytime you go to church, learn to sing when others are singing. Learn to pray when others are praying. And always allow your heart, your mind to be in the church at the service so that you can always participate as others are participating in worshiping God. Let us not be carried away by anything around us. Don't talk when preaching is going on. Don't talk when singing is going on. Don't talk when prayer is going on in the service. 
These are ways to show true worship to the Lord. And most especially, let our mind and heart be focused on God. And I want to digress a bit. Even in the classroom, always allow your mind to be in the class. Anytime the teacher is before you, do not be thinking of daytime or do not be thinking of food or something else. Always allow your mind to be in class. We should always be true friends to our friends. Don't be, don't be somebody that loves to praise people in order to get things from them. Don't be a pretender. Don't be an hypocrite. Don't pretend. Pretend is not good for a child of God. Learn to say things as you feel, especially when you are praising them. Don't praise people because you want something good from them. Just like the people singing Hosanna. They all sang Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. But if it's these same people who shouted, crucify him, crucify him. That was pretense. That was pretense. Let us not pretend. Let us always be true-hearted people. Children, one day, when our journey here is over, God will call us back home. Remember, when Christians die, they are transformed into a glorious life. Do not be afraid of death. Death for Christians is a life transformed. It means you are moving from these physical world into a glorious life. We soon be done, we soon be done through trials and temptation. When I get home on the other side, I will shake my hands with others, telling other people good morning. Sit down, we died, my Jesus. Sit down and rest a little while. I, I will shake my hands with others, telling other people good morning. Sit down and rest a little while. Sit down beside my Jesus. So, children, death for Christians is a new life into a new dawn. So it is not something we should be afraid of. And finally, children, Jesus is coming back again. Just as he came for the world to save mankind, Jesus is coming back to take his saints home. Will you be among the saints? Jesus loves you so much that he wants us all to be among the saints. And so, children, Jesus is calling on you today to ride with him so that you can have that glorious life when it is time. And so, if, like I said, Jesus loves you so much and he wants you to remain his friends. So children, if you have not been his friend, I say again, this is another time. He loves you and he wants the best for you. And so children, let us pray because the Lord loves us so much. Let us thank him for his love over our lives. Let us thank him for coming into the world to show us the way. Give him thanks. Lord, we thank you. Now ask him, if you have not been his friend, tell him to come in. 
say, Jesus, be my friend. I want to be your friend. Help me. I want to be your friend. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, let us pray that throughout this week, we will learn to be humble, we will learn to love our Master Jesus. Jesus, help me to be humble. Help me to love you. Help me not to be afraid of death. And help me to know that you're coming again to take me home so that I can sit down beside you and be happy to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done for us. Be thou glorified, be thou exalted forever in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, children, it's time to learn our memory verse. It's taken from Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding on a donkey, a cot, a foal of a donkey. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. So, let's learn it together. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding on a donkey, a cot, a fool of a donkey. So, let's learn it and let us rejoice as we go into the new week. God bless us all. Bye.